Hi guys, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, we're moving along in terms of solving our bending moment diagram. Uh, what have we done so far? Well, we, uh, we had a beam with a multitude of different loadings and we solved for the reactions from right here. And then we went, I showed you how to use the area method of the shear uh, diagram to calculate the moment. So we did that, we found the maximum moment and uh, we, we drew our, our shear and bending moment diagrams. So now we are given, and this is the, the next step in the question, and this kind of question is something you can definitely expect uh, in, in, this, in a course like this. Uh, every civil engineer needs to know how to draw bending moment diagrams, and if you don't, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. So um, this is something that you should really, really focus on and pay attention, and you can expect your teacher to ask you to solve a bending moment diagram and he's gonna ask you, or she's gonna ask you eight or nine or 10 different questions after that bending moment diagram. And if you get it wrong, you're just gonna get a zero. Uh, that's just the way it works. Uh, at least that's the way it worked in my class. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's not what anyone wants, right? So focus on getting the bending moment diagram correct. Practice a lot of different problems. And as soon as you know that you're, you're getting it right, we can move into this section. So if you're not here yet, if you're not, if you haven't mastered the bending moment diagram, I suggest going back and doing more problems, resolving the video before, I'll, I'll add a link. Uh, and you know what, if you're, if you're good and if you're feeling confident, let's get started, okay? So this video is on a, a, a continuation of the bending moment diagram, but it's uh, on the moment of inertia, okay? And uh, we discussed this in strengths one previously, however, um, it's coming back now and you know, you're gonna have to be able to do it quick and efficiently. So, uh, what is the moment of inertia? Essentially, it's, the, it's a measure of uh, resistance to bending of a, uh, of, of a beam or of a cross section, or of, of any shape, essentially. And uh, it's, it's also frequently called the second moment of area. So, we are going to solve this cross section here. Now, this cross section is the cross section from this beam, okay? And we're gonna use the information that we found from this beam to calculate the flexural stresses, but that's gonna come after. So, what do we need to do first? Okay, well, we have the moment of inertia, well, we we're asked to find the moment of inertia. We're given the cross section with the different, uh, with various uh, dimensions. Uh, luckily for us, this is, um, well, I mean, it's symmetrical in the Y. It's not in the X, so that's not so lucky. We are going to have to find the centroid of the shape. Now, in a question like this, you're pretty much always going to have to find the moment of inertia in the X axis because the loading is coming from the top of the beam, okay? So let's begin uh, by finding the centroid of the shape. How do we do that? Well, if you remember before, uh, I'm not gonna go too far into depth about finding the centroid. We did do a video on this before, but uh, we're going to number our sections, okay? So we're gonna number them section one, two, and three, all right? And as you can see, before I start, the video started, I made a little table here. I suggest you do this. Uh, it's going to help you organize your numbers and you're not going to make a silly mistake because this is just the start of the problem. Okay, so we're going to fill out our sections one, two, and three, and we're simply just going to calculate the area of each of the shapes. Now before we do that, we need to assign a datum line. So the datum line is the, uh, an align, uh, I mean a line, it could be on the top or the bottom, it depends, and that is the line that we're going to take our measurements from. And it doesn't matter if you take it from the top or the bottom, you're going to get the same numbers Okay, so uh, just for the sake of this question, this is going to be our datum. So the datum is what we're going to measure the distances to the shapes from, okay? So starting with section one, we have a 200 millimeter by 40 millimeter block. That's 8,000 millimeters squared. I won't put the units in, that's fine. Section two, we have a 200 by 30 millimeter block. That's 6,000, okay? And for the third block, we have a 40 by 100 millimeter section. And uh, the summation of all the areas is 18,000. And that's what we're going to need to, uh, to, to find our Y bar, okay? We'll go into that after. Now, what's Y bar? Y bar, if you remember from previous uh, videos, is the distance from the datum to the centroid of the shape in question. Okay, so for section one, the centroid of the shape, 
w with regards to y bar um, is is going to be 20, right? Because the distance of a of a rectangle or the the centroid of a rectangle is the halfway point, right? We all know that, and the distance from that halfway point or the centroid of that shape to the datum is going to be 20 millimeters, okay? And that's what we're going to use. Now, for section two, what's the centroid of a 200 millimeter tall rectangle? Same as this, 100, just take half. But we need, also need to add 40 here, right? Because we need to measure from the datum to the centroid of this shape, okay? So we're going to take 40 plus 100, we have 140. And then for section three, the centroid of this shape alone is 20. However, we're going to need to add this 200 and the 40 to that, giving us 260. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. And now, all that's left is just to multiply the area and the Y bars together. So let's do that quickly. And summating all of these AY bars, we have, and uh, I mean, I guess I'll write this down for you. So Y bar is equal to the summation of AY bar over summation of A, and that will give us Y bar. So what do we have? We have 2,040,000 over 18,000. Okay, and that's going to give us 133.33 millimeters, okay? What does that mean? Well, 133.33 millimeters from the datum going downwards is the location of our neutral axis, okay? And then by our powers of deduction, the entire length of the I-beam minus the distance that we got here, which is 103.33 millimeters, 113.33 millimeters, is going to be 166.67 millimeters, okay? And that's the first step in solving the moment of inertia of the shape and then afterwards solving the flexural stress. Uh, stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to delve a little deeper into finding the moment of inertia.